Everyone I talk to about Iridus Alpha, main question on their minds is how does it work? It's 36 years old this year, so it's time to figure this thing out. Iridus Alpha was written by Jeff Minter of Llamasoft in 1986, and it was published by Houston Consultants, which is unusual in itself because Llamasoft usually published its own games, but then this entire game is unusual. The manual ends with mentioning the reason why Iridus Alpha is what it is. It's a shooter with some extra depth. Jeff made Iridus Alpha to make the point that shooters don't have to be dumb shooters. There's enough to blast in the game, but there's also more than enough stuff to think about. Perhaps that's why Iridus Alpha is somewhat of a mystery to the uninitiated. If you're a fan of old 8-bit computers, you will already know who Jeff Minter is, and more importantly, you are probably familiar with some of his games, including Hover Buffer, Grid Runner, Attack of the Mutant Camels, and of course, Iridus Alpha. But have you actually played it? And if you have, did you get it? Or did you get uh, licked by the liquor ships and just give up on it? If you never gave Iridus Alpha a proper chance, then maybe you should get stuck in. Give it a proper go. But be warned, but going into Iridus Alpha thinking it's a defender-like shmup, you probably won't survive beyond wave 3, wondering why the hell you died. The game really begs you to read the manual and put some time into working out how it wants to be played. It's true, having experience with some of Jeff's previous games also helps. Certain game mechanics will be familiar to it, like balancing energy and playing upside down, that kind of stuff. There's plenty of information online, but somehow there are very few videos on YouTube about Iridus Alpha, let alone ones that explain how to actually play the game. Most people seem to remain stuck at the I don't know what's going on level, which is totally forgivable. So how do you play Iridus Alpha? It's important to remember the Jeff Minter games always want to put you into what is called the zone. I think you put someone there by letting them concentrate while not allowing them to focus in on just one thing. That's how Jeff gets your fingers to do the shooting while your mind is dividing its attention over different things. The zone. As Jeff himself says it, being able to play for more than mere survival, able to play beautifully rather than simply not dying, being in that state of oneness with the game, a state players refer to as being in the zone, is almost like meditation. There's a story to Iridus Alpha. Technically, you don't have to know the story to be able to play the game, but Jeff put a bit of effort into it, so we might as well take a moment. A moment to enrich our experience with some background. There is a war on planet Iridus Alpha between the humans and the defenses on the planet left there by the Iridians. The Iridians themselves have left the planet, leaving it in stasis, while they are off looking for peace and having evolved beyond the need for physical bodies. Naturally, the Iridians wanted to protect their precious planet from being robbed, and they installed some heavy defenses. The defenses and weapons left by the Iridians were very interesting to the humans in their fight against the Zyaxians, on whose planet, Zyax Prime, the existence of Iridus Alpha was discovered in the Iridian base there. The defenses are based on a multi-phase reality field around the planet, allowing it to exist in two orientations at the same time. Furthermore, there are five different realities, each in two orientations. In order to deal with this confusing planet, the humans built a craft containing a specially adapted brain which called itself Gilby. Gilby has to fight the Iridian defenses by killing the Iridian ships to absorb their energy, but not too much or Gilby will explode, and this energy can then be exchanged with the planet's core. Once the core has enough energy, Gilby has to run an obstacle course while being chased by flying eyeballs. It's vital that Gilby switches orientations before entropy has eroded the unused Gilby's energy away. That's a lot to take in, but it will make sense, I promise. Now, there's a little side story to this story. 
In the original Zap 64 issue number 18 from October 1986, there was a very positive review of Iridus Alpha. But the story in that article looks like it was almost completely made up by the reviewers. I don't know whether they were under some kind of time restraint and had to come up with something quickly, but it's very clear that they didn't read the manual very well. Their story is bizarrely different from the game's real manual. In the Zap 64 issue, they mentioned that the game is about a war between the Zyaxians and the Gilbians? With their Gilbian robot fighters, for instance? The game is actually about humans going to Iridus Alpha using an intelligent craft that calls itself Gilby. What? The article goes on to mention that the Zyaxians are stealing energy from Iridus Alpha. Actually, the humans are after the defense technology left behind by the Iridians. Zap fails to mention the Iridians entirely. And they even mention a bunch of subspecies that belong to the Zyaxians. None of this is part of the original story, not even in the added information Jeff Minter gives in his Yak's Progress tape, where he specifically added some background information about the Zyaxians. So, I don't know what the guys at Zap64 were drinking at the time, but I'm sure it wasn't truth serum. It's bizarre to me that a game write-up could be so obviously wrong in a well-respected magazine, and this description can still be found on the internet today. So let's have a look at the game screen. The game screen is divided into three parts. There's the top reality, there's the bottom reality, and then there's the control panel. While shooting and dodging enemies, your eyes will be switching between these three parts in order to keep an eye on what you should be doing or where you should be going next. This part is the top reality. This is where you start out. It's basically your Gilby, the enemies, the ground, and the warp gate. And then there's the bottom reality. During the first three waves, the bottom reality will only show what the warp gate looks like, what the core area looks like, and what the rest looks like. The core area is where you can land to exchange Gilby's energy with the planet core, and the rest is where Gilby goes to take flight again. Only after beating the first three waves will the bottom reality section actually show a second reality. The second reality is upside down and has its own level and its own wave. I'll show you how and why to use this reality. The first three waves are really just to get you started. And then there's the control panel. Airdus Alpha is a complex game that requires you to think while you blast. You need information to play the game properly or you'll die. That's what the control panel is for. It looks like a mess, but it'll all make sense. Let's start with entropy. In each reality, your Gilby has its own entropy level, as indicated here. The game ends when the entropy level in either one of the realities has depleted. The more time you spend in one reality, the lower the entropy level will become in the other one. It is vital that you switch between realities before it's too late. The darker the indicator, the worse the situation is. And when four seconds are left before destruction, your screen will start flashing violently. It's time to go. After the third wave, you can start moving between realities. You do this by shooting an enemy and flying through the ring it leaves behind without shooting at the ring. It can be difficult to know in which reality you are, but your ship will turn gray in the reality you are not in. So never try to control a gray ship. You can also keep an eye on which enemy counter is going down. But the strongest signal I find you will receive is that the ship you're not controlling will be going in the opposite direction. When you decide it's time to switch, start decreasing your fire rate. This will leave more rings floating around. It's impossible to avoid switching realities involuntarily sometimes, but it's better to switch too often than not at all. Your Gilby also has its own energy. How does that work? Shooting an enemy gives you energy and being hit by an enemy takes energy away. Too little energy and Gilby will die. Too much energy and Gilby will also die. Keep an eye on your energy meter or the color of your ship. A dark ship means you have little energy and a white ship means that you have too much. 
Some enemies give and or take more energy than others. This all means that you can't just blindly shoot. When your ship is charged and colored white, it's time to shed some energy. You can land on the core area to feed energy to the planet or simply take some hits to shed some. A green gilby is a happy gilby. Enemies will be coming at you in waves. Finishing a wave means progression. The number of enemies left to destroy in the current wave is indicated here. Please note that this is a hexadecimal number. In short, hexadecimal digits range from 0 to 9 and then from A to F. So each digit can represent 16, 0 to F, instead of just 10, 0 to 9, different numbers. Besides fun and exciting, Iridus Alpha also aims to be educational. Each wave has a varying number of enemies to kill and each level consists of 20 waves. There are five realities or levels to beat and the first waves have 20 hex enemies, that's 32 in decimal. After you've killed enough enemies in the first three waves, you get a little breather and a look at the score screen. Your progress is indicated by green arrows for each wave that you've finished. A red arrow shows your current wave. This is shown automatically only after the third wave and when you die. At any time during the game, you can press the space bar to get to this screen, just to calm the nerves. About calming the nerves, while you're in the score screen, you can press F1 to get access to two mini games, Made in France, or MIF, and DNA, which is more of a demo than a game. Pressing the asterisk while in MIF takes you to DNA. In MIF, you can use the N and M keys to control the direction of a beam of light by placing mirrors. Try to hit the target before the timer runs out. This game reminds me of Deflex a lot. And in the other game, well, it's basically DNA and it's a demonstration of Jeff's routines for moving sprites in waves. You can influence the wave's behavior and a few other parameters. It's just something to play around with. Now for the score. Remember that your score is split between two realities. When you die, your final score is these two scores added together. And don't forget the score multiplier. The faster you go, the higher the score. While it may seem like a safe method to stand still and shoot enemies, you will not score any points at all. Your multiplier will be zero. The faster you move, the higher your score multiplier, the higher your score. If you're playing to get as far as you can, you could sacrifice scoring. Let's have a look at warping. This indicates the level or the wave number that you are currently in. It counts from 1 to 20. Remember, 20 waves per reality. Note that each orientation can be in a different reality at the same time. Basically, you're playing the same game twice. Once you've completed enough waves in one reality, the warp gate will allow you to move to another one by flying through it. The shape of the warp gate for each one of the realities is either a cow, a ship, some bricks, mushrooms, or a weird symbol that looks like the number 30 to me. These white arrows shown here indicate the warp gate's current destination. Each time you shoot anything, you change the destination of the gate. So be careful to stop shooting when it's pointed at the correct place. You don't have to fight through all of the waves of a reality to get to the next one. At some point the gate will open up and you can travel between the realities you've unlocked. Using the warp gate is also a good way of avoiding Gilby decay. In other words, you can prevent entropy from destroying you by flying through the warp gate. The score screen will highlight all of the planets that you've gained access to. It will open automatically any time you reach a new planet. Now we have the core energy left. When your Gilby has too much energy, you can charge the planet's core by landing on the core area. When you stop shooting and land on the core area, Gilby extends its little legs and you can walk along the surface. Your method of firing will change and your energy will flow into the planet's core. When the planet's core is full, a bonus stage will start. Note that when your Gilby is low on energy, landing on the core will take energy already stored in the core and return it to Gilby. Now for this bonus stage. In this mini game, you control Gilby in a top-down scrolling game. 
It feels almost like Gilby is a pinball on a pinball table. You bounce everywhere. Gilby goes in the opposite direction of where you point the joystick. I simply turn my joystick around 180 degrees. The terrain influences your progress and the idea is just to get to the end. Iridus Alpha is a game like no other. It definitely has a Jeff Minter style and its difficulty has scared many away. Even when you've uncovered its most obvious secrets, it's still a dauntingly large and challenging game. One I doubt anyone has ever beat without trainers. Jeff's innovative way of building reusable modules for his games offers a wide variety in terrain and enemy behavior which keep you scratching your head time and time again. In 1986, Iridus Alpha had some stiff competition in games like Iridium, Yar Kung Fu, Gauntlet, Alley Cat and Revs Plus, just to name a few. While it may not have been a graphical or musical masterpiece, the gameplay and the concept and execution of the game were enough to turn many heads and achieve some high review scores. The only downside is perhaps that the game is too hard to beat. But maybe it's just not made to be finished. Maybe it's made to keep you in the zone until the end of your days.